You are now listening to Out of the Blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Drew Lido. What's up, what's up? Mr. Italian Mafia. <laughs> what's up, buddy? I haven't seen you in ages, man. You got tattoos and everything on you. You're looking beefed up. Hell yeah. Just just got 20th tattoo Friday. Literally was driving to go pick up some stuff. Went right past the uh, studio. I said, fuck it. Came back. Walked in. I was like, you got time for me to my artist? She said, hell yeah. Damn right. It's an addiction, isn't it, once you start getting tattoos? Now, I actually, from what I've noticed so far, I think my favorite one is the one you have on your right bicep, um, the Black Death, which is the Plague Doctor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not know what that is. Surprisingly, yeah, yeah. I get a lot of people asking about it, and I was quite surprised. It's I, the Vitruvian Mass thing. The ones that the doctors use, you know all about yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, and they they would coat them in wax because they were like, okay, that's how we're gonna seal it, and like they would just they had their little sticks that or not sticks but like uh prods really because that's yeah. what it was and they would use that to like touch the people that are like dying. Well, I'm actually obsessed with um Victorian surgery too. Okay. Uh, if you ever seen um, there's Doctor Lindsay Fitzharris. Uh, she was on a Joe Rogan podcast, but she tells you um about this guy known as the fastest knife in the West End. His name is, uh, jo I think it's Joseph Lister. No, Robert Liston is his name. And um, he has a 300% mortality rate in one of his surgeries. Now listen to that. 300%. Yeah. Okay, so he killed the patient. Because most of the time back then you're getting surgery. There's no an anesthetics or anything mm -hmm. like that to knock you out or whatever. So um, you had to be as quick as possible. So they wanted you fast. They wanted a fast surgeon. It's not going to sit there and go, oh, I'm sorry. And like slowly <laughs> cutting you like outback bread or something. But like... Um, he was doing the surgery and he was moving so quick that when he chopped the lady's leg off, she obviously bled out. You know, they don't usually tend to leave, live after that. And um, he was moving so quick, he cut his um, assistant's fingers during the surgery. Jesus. He ended up dying of like a later infection. And then he sliced a guy's coat because he was throwing knives because he's moving so quick. He's putting knives in his mouth and doing all this <laughs> types of stuff. And um, he cut some dude's coat, and the dude had a heart attack. So he had a 300% mortality rate. And a lot of people don't know about, like, if anybody was to look up the Vitruvian mass, the plague doctors used them back in the day when the Black Death was spreading. And they would actually stick um, bath salts and these types of smelling salts inside yeah. of their mask. Roses, too, like flowers, yeah, anything. To help them um, kind of get over the sickness, because it just smells like death and like <laughs> shit, basically. Because everyone's like... But that was just a cool thing. A lot of people don't know the history behind those things. And um, th that's actually one thing that fascinates me is the Black Death, because it's been around for a long time. Oh, it's yeah. used military. What's your favorite tattoo you have on your body? Ooh, oh, so that's a hard one. Uh, I think, honestly, the, one, the funniest one I have is the little lemon because I designed it myself entirely. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And Looks he's just, a lemon he's, thrown up, yeah, bro. But he, like, so the thing is, like, he's juicing himself, and he's, yeah, he's just throwing it all up. And, yeah, I came with that, drew it up and everything, gave it to an artist, and she just, like, obviously made it ten times better and cooler. But, I don't know, in terms of art and meaning to me, it's a little faded now, but I have a, a really big wooden cross on my back, because I'm Christian, Protestant, and it's done very well. It's all wooden, has like the uh, wreath of thorns around at the bottom. Yeah. I love it. Uh, I mean, that's cool. It has significant meaning to you. I see you got the Lady Justice on your arm, too. Yep. Dude, and, you got, as I'm noticing, like, you just showed me your leg and it has the baby dragon on it. Like, that's. And thank you for saying baby dragon. Because yeah. a lot of people say Charmander. And I'm like, really? No. Yeah. Are they idiots? Exactly. And I, and I have Squirtle, though. A little gentleman squirtle. A little gentleman squirtle? Yep. Drew, now, drew oh, you got Mr. Too. Me Seeks from Rick and Morty on your leg, dude. Yep, drew that one too. Do you get ever get made fun of for any of these tattoos? Like someone calling you a nerd? Bro, especially in the army. Hell, I made fun of, but I don't care. Who you cares, last... man? Now, here's one thing I really, really admire about you. Ever since back in school, man, like, I mean, I remember telling you a lot of the times, like, when people used to, like, remember you used to listen to your M&M headphones, and you used to, like, or not M&M headphones, but you listen to m and in your headphones, mm -hmm. and not your head, and, like, kind of, like, you know, like... And I still do. Yeah. I, hey, dude, but remember I would tell you, like, I would tap on your shoulder, like, they're making fun of you. 
and you'd be like, I don't give a shit. And you got mad at me one time for me saying it. Like, you, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Though. It's it's all good. But I was like, I under I, I I didn't see it back then because I was I think like most kids my like our age. I was more concerned about what others thought of me. And that's the one thing like I admire you because you figured out more than anybody out there before anybody. Like where I'm at now, don't give a fuck. That's true, like, man. That is that was wonderful, dude. I seriously gotta give you respect for that, man, because Thank you. you you definitely like I mean, once I like started not kind of caring what people thought and stopped like I mean we all do subconsciously. We're oh, never yeah, we're course. never ever gonna get over it. We all had these quick little glances and always <laughs> judging others, but you had that and like you were able to stand up in front of everybody and like rap and do all this stuff at like performance like assemblies and stuff and you literally did not care and even though kids messed around and would like give you shit and like mm. mess around with you like trying to give you like oh yeah good job man you're an awesome rapper when are you gonna drop that mixtape it's like I think about those guys now and then those are the type of people that message you and are like I'm so <laughs> sorry for what I said like I was a dick and it was like yeah it was like because I, I, I was just afraid. I was just trying to get by through high school, much like a lot of us were. But it seemed like others found a way of, like, picking on others and putting them down, dude. And you rose above that, man. And great for fucking respect for you, dude. And still not giving a shit, man. That's, like, the best thing in the world, dude. Yeah, seriously, I, thank you a lot. I I love to hear that, and I appreciate that. And I'm happy that you've, you know, grown to, you know, think like that. It's Growing up with my mom, she raised me a lot. And... She was really cool. She let me do really whatever I want as long as I was, you know, wasn't doing dumb shit and being an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> she let me do whatever I want, have fun. She let me paint, decide the colors for my walls one day for my room. Something really simple. And I said I wanted yellow, red, and black. And you know what? I got that. I got to paint every one of my walls a different color. Are you born in Germany or something? <laughs> eh, favorite colors, I don't know. <laughs> but I like Nazi that. eugenics. <laughs> <Sick hell>. <laughs> 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 it's it, it's cool, dude, because, like, you literally, like, I mean, I remember you from the Italian Mafia type guy that always wore, like, the Mione shirt and, like, mm -hmm. that type of stuff, which I do want to end up talking about how you worked at Mione's at one point. Okay. I got some good questions. Yeah, I was there for that. four years. It's the only job I've ever worked besides in the Army now. But I do, I think we, we, like, the whole aspect, like, your mom gave you, like, she had it, she had it the right way to teach you. She was like, hey, like... Be yourself. Do whatever you want to do. That's not going to hurt anybody else. But if you want to express yourself in any other way that like other people are going to knock you down for, just don't care what others think. And I think that's a lot of what needs to be brought back into the world, dude. Because like, all right, so I, I always say this on the podcast. I started a podcast and everyone's like, why are you doing it? And why are you doing stuff like that? Which is probably a question you might have. It's just like, nah, dude, I think it's great, man. Why not, man? It's like, you're a book, dude. I want to hear the story of Andrew Leto. Like, I want to, I want to, it's, you're literally like, I can't, I mean, I'm a good reader, but I can't read for shit. Like, when it comes to sitting down and actually making myself do it. So, it's like, it, you're telling me a story, man, and that's easier having a conversation. I've always been a talker, but, like, when I graduated, I just stopped talking. And then I was like, that's all built up inside of me. Like, all right, I need to start communicating with the world again. You start oh, yeah. finding out some fascinating shit. Oh, yeah. And like you're saying, like, ev it's true. Everyone has a story. Like, it it blows my mind. We all think, like, we're different. But, I mean, honestly, we are. But when you come down to it, like, you can find a lot of similarities in people the way we've grown up in each other. And... You know, for those people that like, like going back to what you're saying, making fun of others, I guarantee if you actually like got the chance to sit down with someone one on one like this, you could actually find so many things that like, holy shit, we're not so different from each other, and that's why I kind of like that you do this. Like, you know, you're getting all these people from different parts of life. You come in here, you sit them down, and like, that's amazing. Yeah, one of the things you asked me is like, can we do it over the phone at first? And I was like, nah, man, we got to have that real conversation. You got to come in and see the podcast room. You got to be able to like experience, like I need to have the interaction. Like once you throw phones in and th start throwing technology in, like it's good to get it, like the recording done through it. But man, when, you're, when you don't have that, real essence of a conversation like those moments you probably experienced being in the army and stuff like dealing with um like just with your buddies man you guys are out doing these runs and these hardcore tasks together and next thing you know like you guys are bonding like creating a, a group bond and stuff like where you're gonna be like, these are my fucking brothers like 
You know, and it's just those conversations you have. You wouldn't be able to have that over fucking Call of Duty. I mean, you know what I mean? Right about that, man. You're definitely right about that. Like, once technology gets involved, like, yeah, there's a basis. Like, all right, this is obviously the task we need to do, and this is how the game's lined up for us to play. But it's like, when you're out in the real world experiencing it, and, like, you're out having these real moments with people, you create such a vibe and such, like, a a tone of a conversation where you look back at that person, you might not remember what's exactly said. But you know, like... You guys had an impact on each other, and like I'd be there for that guy to the fucking end, like you Hell know. Yeah. And that's like important, especially when I when I do these podcasts. I I don't want you to think like it's it's just an interview. It's it's a conversation. Oh yeah. And you gotta like you're just talking to Robbie. Like that's the <laughs> best way I can describe it. And then like people that don't truly know me are like. Well, what the hell is talking to Robbie? I'm like, you just got to be on it, man. I'll go from fart joke to conspiracy theory to, to whatever you want, man. It's Sometimes like, come here and find deep. out. Exactly. And, um, like, I had Brian Young on my podcast. And we talked about how the podcast is like a, a mist or a fortune cookie. We always crack down to the mystery inside. I'm like, damn right, dude. And I do want to, st- to kind of stick on the basis of how the show usually lines up the first minute. We kind of skipped over. What do you do professionally? Okay, so as you mentioned, uh, I am in the army. Uh, I'm infantry, and when it comes to infantry, there's two types: uh, 11 Bravo, which is like the infantry everyone thinks of, like walks with their weapon, their M4, like goes on patrols and all that, kicks in doors, yada yada. I'm the other side of that, which is 11 Charlie. I'm a mortarman, and so I deal with sending explosive mortar shells downrange to essentially blow up the enemy. That is dope. Yeah, I have shot a lot of mortars. Have you shoved anything in a mortar gun that is probably not supposed to be in there? Like an ear of corn? So, me, no. But I I know stories from my old platoon sergeant where they were smuggling liquor by putting them in the tubes. Because uh, we have, there's different sizes, and one's uh, 120 millimeter, so decently sized tube hole. And they were just put liquors and bottles of liquor in there so that they weren't coming back is just full of liquor now imagine shooting a corn on the cob like just right through that and like hitting somebody with that like that just like hits them in the arm it just goes right through their oh. chest or something oh my god that'd be nuts well it's crazy dude, i tell you shit actually coming out of that too guarantee that'd be popcorn at that time oh dude that's like explosive shrapnel at that point you're getting hit with popcorn Getting hit by freaking Orville Redenbacher's creative mix, dude. Oh my god, <laughs> it's crazy because like if you think about like Civil War times, they were like they're running out of ammunition, so they were just shoving like silverware and oh, shit. Oh yeah, in there. like same with like fucking boats and the pirates, man. Anything can get in there. Now I'm like most people are like, how did you know that they were doing that in Civil War times? Well, I saw a good movie called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slayer. Oh my and god! And let's just say he was shoving some silver stuff in there when they were running out of ammo to kill those vampires. So that's where that knowledge came from. So you might anybody might want to fact check me on that one. <laughs> but it's it's crazy because like a lot of people like they want to run from the danger. And, I mean, even though you're not right in the shit, you're still involved. Like, mm-hmm. there is still, you're, you are you got to know when you're shoving something into a mortar, like an explosive, like, ammunition thing, that, you know, this is going to hit somebody, and it's probably going to cause something. So, what steps do you have to take, or what training methods did you have to take? Obviously, besides, you know, how to use it. Mm-hmm. But, like, knowing when, like, to fire off at a certain building. Like, you're just not firing shots off, oh, right? Oh, okay, so, oh, this is, that's crazy uh it's actually a really it's really technical i I shit you not it we so there's people called fo's field observers or forward observers sorry and they're looking at the enemy they go through a whole bunch of math they send it up to us we put it in this little computer and then that computer gives us numbers and we put those numbers into a site that's on the mortar and we're aiming at these these red and white poles and that's like, it's like our way of saying through the site and lining up with the tube, like when you aim at those poles, you're really aiming at like a building that's like, it could be like 2,500 meters away. And as soon as you're on those poles, drop around and bam, it's done. So is it, does it like when you're, have you fired off at enemy territory before? Oh God, no, no, I've done... Many a training missions and shit, 
but never, obviously, never got the chance to do it. Have, really. Are you nervous? Like, if you ever have to get down to that point, are you going to think be able to, um, like, perform and think about that? I mean, you got to think you're launching. Even though it's not like as maybe impactful as someone taking a gun and shooting someone right in the head in front of them, but like you're still like you're able to cause a hell of a lot more damage. And you don't know if there could be a family in there. You don't know what it could be. So, uh, like you said, I'm I'm not right there. Be, or if I'm using my mortar, I'm not going to be right there. You know, shooting someone in the face or whatever. But uh, I don't know. I've grown. I don't want to sound like uh, the emo kid, but I have grown numb, I guess. I, I just don't really care. I'm there to do my job. And, you know, the way I think about it is if I kill one guy that was going to blow himself up and kill 20, you know, I'm doing the right thing. And I do hate, the biggest thing I hate is the innocence of war. Like, saying how, like, yeah, I could hit someone that's, like, totally not a part of where all this is supposed to be going down of, it's sad. But I... I have to push that out of there because this is the job I have. I'm there trying to protect as many people as I can. And sadly, shit like that does happen. And, you know, it's... It's, it's just a casualty It just happens. War. It really is. And, I mean, we do our best. Trust me. We, yeah. The, the what's portrayed is what we are sometimes. It's like, you know, these warmongering people. It's not true. I, most of us are 18 to 24-year-old dudes who are just out there, like, we're just doing our job. Just trying to serve your country and protect your homeland. Exactly. Like, yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Like, because you watch a movie like Lone Survivor or something. Mm -hmm. Like, that beginning line he says, you know, like, where you know, there's three types of people in this world. Sheep, sheep, dog, and wolves. And he goes, um, I, I didn't raise a house of sheep, and I'll beat your ass if you're a wolf. So, you know, the only other choice is sheep, dog. <laughs> so, it's like... When you hear that, that gets you signed up for the fucking military. Like, those types of movies like that, like, they get you, like... Or that wasn't Lone Survivor, that was American Sniper. And, like, those types of movies get you signed up, like, to go into war and go fight for your country and get you brainwashed. Like, I'm ready to kill the enemy, and you're really not seeing both sides. So, like, I just had to kind of play devil's advocate where, you know, like... Obviously, what you're doing is brave, and it's cool that you're, like, running into that. But, like, other people are going to hear that. Like, you're just brainwashed and, like, all these types of things. And it's like... It... it, it with, if you got to make a logical decision when you go into the military, you can't just be like, I'm just going to do this because this is what, you know, my plan was when I was a kid. I was going to go fight for my country, fight under the flag. You have to have a, you know, you got to take your choices in hand here. Like, you're going to put your life on the line for a country that might be doing something that you might not feel right. Yeah, because, and with that, like, I really don't even believe that we should be in the Middle East. I I really want to go back and focus on us. Like, I don't think yeah. we should be the world police, I think. To me, it's kind of dumb. I think we need to promote more development here. Like, we're definitely losing some factors. Like, much like when you see the iPhone ten that's coming out, it's like, whoa. It's like, hey, the iPhone 7 wasn't that fucking great. <laughs> like, there's some still improvements, like, needed for it. And it's like, we're, we're, we're more on expanding and trying to create, like, the, yeah, like you were saying, world police. Like, we're trying to be, like have our hands in everybody's little mix and it's like why don't we just work on keeping us sustainable to where we can focus on some other stuff like china's got it kind of figured out they're not really expanding any other territories they're yeah. kind of just focusing on what they have mostly because those guys are breeding like rabbits yeah, down there dying. yeah oh, well, I was, I was, what do you mean they're kind of dying saying, i thought you say well, when you said breathe, I thought you were going to say breathing because their fucking air is terrible man oh, yeah i'm yeah. like holy shit <laughs> like they gotta fix that didn't first. they have the olympics and Beijing or something and, yeah. and like it had one it had like a massive amount of air pollution one minute and then the next like I think it was like a week later there was like no air pollution they're like how did they do that and like Rob Williams has a joke that everyone just inhaled <laughs> and then fucking moved and then blew it somewhere else and it's like you gotta think though like you're on your bike and you crash it like Bill Burr has that joke you crash your bike in freaking China and you kill like 30 of them like <laughs> We talk about car accidents here and how many people die from those. Like, there's a crap ton of population down there. And they're so, like, when you see them bump into the store and do you, like, and they just completely gloss over it. And you're like, hey, man, that was rude. That's what they do down there. And they're not, they're not, being, they're not being mean. They're being ignorant because 
that's what they do. That's what they're supposed to do. There's so many of them, like, they push kids out of their way, and it's not even seen as a bad thing. It's like, you're just trying to move around. Like, there's yeah. so many of us here. And, uh, I mean, I assume it's, like, Japan, but, like, with the uh, subway system, where, like, they literally have people that push you into the subway. So Cranny and they're, like, sardines. Yeah. Oh. And it's like, we got to really take our benefits here. Like, we're totally kind of gloss over where we're at. We got oh, a yeah. great oh. spot on this world. People to tell, with. you know, people get political and everything and talk shit about America. I mean, we're not perfect, and no one is. But, I swear to God, you look at other countries, I'm proud to be here. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, how often can you go get a beer and then get a burger and just relax and freaking enjoy, like, you know, whatever you really want to feel like doing. You, there's a lot of freedoms here, and a lot of people just focus on, like, the bad things. That has to be a giant news thing, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, it's funny with saying news. So, we get shown so much stuff that it puts this crazy perspective that the world's nuts. But we're actually in the most, like, peaceful time of world ever. It's just we see so much of it that we think it's going terrible. Because think about it, like, Crusades were happening, you know, X amount of hundreds of years ago. Fucking world wars were happening. Like, it's just not, we don't cover, we weren't able to cover all that shit, and no one really saw it. It just happened. Now, you know, something happens, you know, anywhere around the world, everyone's going to know about it. It's the, it's the mean world um, theory, which is like that, or it's mean world syndrome. It's where media plays massive amounts of, like, bad stuff. Um, that influence a population like TV. It's all the belief that all these technologies that we have that we're so susceptible to uh, creates our darkened mind where we're less likely to go outside and experience the world in fear of what it is. And it's actually a big problem with uh, young children. Main reason why they start to, when they get older as adults, they tend to be less more active and out into society and more, you know, they're more isolated. And same thing with elderly people. This is a problem with them. Um, about like 65% of elderly people that are resting in nursing homes have a tendency to be scared of what the world is and going out into it because all they're doing is sitting in a retirement home, not able to go anywhere, watching TV all day, and they're seeing the news. And that's mostly why when you walk into a nursing room, if you ever see them watching Jeopardy, or something like, why is that? Why are they watching Family Feud or something right on? It's because their TV is set to that channel um, by the person that walks in the room, so they're not focusing on news to actually. Okay. So that's a good little fun fact. I like it. And it's like, it, it makes sense, man. I mean, when I. I've been yelled at multiple times in the store by an elderly person. I'm like, look, man, I'm sorry. Do you need help? Like, are you obviously having a bad day? Like, I can help you to your car or something. They're like, whoa, I didn't expect that from you. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, most kids raised are like kicking the door down and like smoking, vaping cigarettes in the store and having sex in the aisles near the canned ham that I'm always trying to get to. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. But thank you for giving me that wonderful compliment. And he's like, what's your name? Like, I've been going to the gym almost er or every day for almost seven years now. And I get asked by all these people, like, they're like, are you still on that? I'm like, nah, man, you can use it. And like, whoa, like, you've been coming in here. I see you all the time. And I've never actually heard you say anything before. You're really nice. I'm like, yeah, no worries, man. Like, I'm just here working out. Like, just like you, I'm just focused, determined, trying to get, you know, get in and get out, man. It's not something, you know, you want to sit there and do every, all day, every day or and they're just like, wow, like, you know, it's you don't look like someone that would be this nice. I'm like, well, sorry, most kids my age get displayed in a bad way, uh, you know. Sure. And it, it seems like that's like the the popular norm now. Like, we look at girls and guys that all care about, like, what their body's supposed to look like and all these types of things. It's supposed to look a certain way. You're supposed to be a side zero. It's like then kids get played in a certain way. Like, you got to follow your famous rapper, like, you know, vaping and telling people to, f like, flick off and stuff. I'm like, that's what the news is showing yeah. you. That's not who they really are. Like, Snoop Dogg, Wiz Khalifa, they're not giant, like, fuck you to the police and everything. Nah, that, oh, no. my God. Look, look at Ice Cube. Look how he, he's yeah. changed. Fucking went from NWA, fuck the police and all that, and then goes into family movies. Like, you saw that meme, too, on Facebook? No, nah, no. Nah. Look. It's at first I was like this, and then he's at NWA, and then at, then then I was like, and then he's fishing on freaking Are We There Yet or something. I'm like, no way. It's like it's so true. Though. It's true though. Like you it's know, all facade that they put up, man. Just to sell sell albums. It's it's the same thing. Like the the news is going to be more likely to talk about something bad because that's what's going to get views. You think hearing something good about. 
guess what? Well, a goat climbed a mountain today. <laughs> I'd rather honestly hear that than hear about someone getting shot in the street. And the next thing you know, you got people protesting and rioting, and that fuels even more news. Because what gets more views than anything is bad stuff. Mm -hmm. People want to see the bad. They want to be aware of what's going on out there. It's the same thing we watch the Weather Channel. What's our... You know, what's going to happen? Is it going to be a crappy day? Is it going to be a good day? As soon as you find out it's a good day, you turn it off. As soon as you find out it's a bad day, you're looking up every little statistic on what's the possible chances of rain, what's the possible chances of hail. Like last night, we had a freak thunderstorm out of nowhere, dude. I was, I was at uh, Sportland, and literally, we're just coming in, stay there for like 30 minutes, and then go to walk out. It's like, holy shit, it's fucking They were calling for hail. They were calling for a bunch of stuff. I was like, this came out of nowhere. And I just opened my blinds in here, turned the lights all off, and was just laying on the couch watching thunder and just oh, seeing that. the flash in the sky. And I'm like, this is like... This is like primal essence, man. Like, we're totally missing out. Like, a lot of stuff we take for granted, dude. Especially, like, a kid's more likely to be, like, on his headphones. And then that storm passes. And the mom's like, hey, did you hear that storm last night? Like, what storm? And you had your headphones on the whole time talking to your friends playing Call of Duty Warfare. Grenades are going off. You don't know if it's the TV or the thunderstorm outside. And it's like you're completely unaware of the moments that are happening in your life, dude. And you have to take true meaning in that, man. It's like when I say we got to have aspects of like being able to enjoy a conversation face to face and being able to experience like this talking that we're having. And it's like you don't get that vibe from the conversation the same as you would on the phone or something. I mean, it's still powerful that we can be able to talk to our friends who are really far away. It's got to be a good benefit for you. You calling home or trying to talk back to your family back home. Oh, yeah. So, especially coming up for deployment. Like, that's like, taking shit for granted like that. Like, technology, it's not like it's fucking World War Two again where, like, I got to write a letter in, like, two months... Hope it gets it, there. Yeah, and then by the God, whether if you're even alive by the time it gets to them, they send it back. Like, yeah, technology. It's it's it's, it's changed the world for better and for worse. It it get, it has its gives and takes. Do you think that that's technology's fault? Because it seems like a lot of technology, like a lot of problems we have today, are tech that seem technology calls in the first place, and then it ends up technology is the one that solves it. <laughs> like it's like technology created the problem, then it ended up getting better and then fixing itself so we don't have that problem anymore or do you think that like i feel like we've had problems before but more have arise from technology like it's hard to think like what was it like before lamps what was it like before cell phones and then like people that have experienced that like i didn't need that shit it's like because you found other ways to go around it mm -hmm. and it's like good that we have it now but it's like the more they create and the more stuff they keep making our lives easier it's gonna end up like wally where everyone's sitting on the beds like 800 oh, pounds geez. and we're not I able hope, to move God, I hope not. <laughs> you have to think though people are gonna get lazy as shit oh yeah I mean, uh, ready player one have you read or, i have read not seen, seen that the uh, heart has the iron giant in it and i'm jealous Ooh, oh man so i read the book after i, I watched the movie and like it's kind of weird because I think about that. Like, I think virtual reality like that will happen within mm -hmm. like at twenty or thirty years, depending on like how insane we can get with with technology. Because technology ramps up as like it just the faster, it the better it gets, the faster it gets. Oh, for sure. So, if we do get to the point where like on Second Life, you know, you know the uh, RPG kind of Second Life, it's like uh, on PC. No, it's, but I think I understand the basis of yeah, it. Yeah, it's literally what it says. You just create your own little world. And if that's what it is, or you can just log in every day and be in this whole other world, people are going to stop going outside. Except for, like, drink some water and eat food and go right back in. And like The best part about virtual reality is you can literally do anything. It's like creating it's like being a genie of the real world like you get all these wishes and you can create your own reality like i mean how often are you going to want to experience the real world where you got to go drive your car and what happens if you get a flat tire if you get it in a video game you're like fuck it reset <laughs> and next thing you know it's like dude how long until they start implementing like lives in our actual life you know what i mean like if you die you get an extra you get oh, geez, life. Uh, what was it the car uh some altered carbon on netflix have you, didn't see that either? No. Oh my god, it's amazing. I swear, every episode is like watching an entire movie. Like, the budget for the production was amazing. But it's uh, it's called Stacks, where like your entire life and everything you are is in these things. And you can switch into any body that you want, but it's also 
kind of pricey. So, like, they show in, like, the very first shit. episode where, like, a little girl, like, dies, but their family can only afford the body of an old lady. So she's, like, a nine-year-old girl or whatever in this 80-year-old's body. Dude, that sounds awesome. So, like, all the rich people in the world are, like, living forever. You can go to bed at, like, <laughs> 8 p.m., and you get up real early, you can eat a lot of pudding all day. <laughs> that girl had it fucking made. No. That's crazy, though, because you got to think, if we do get to the point, like, where we're able to get into, like, artificial bodies, be able to transplant our mind, like, um, extrasensualism, which is, or transhumanism is what it's called, like, transcendence, where the guy goes yeah. into the computer. If that ends up happening, like, how long until, like, government and all this stuff starts trying to like profit off of it like hey like oh you you have cancer all right let's see um we can get you a new body but it's gonna be yeah it's eight hundred thousand yeah, dollars exactly. yeah so and you get into a body of a turtle sorry <laughs> it's like what <laughs> oh, I pay that's i like that i'm like and now going to the animals too shit hook me up what animal would you want to go into Ooh, that's hard because my favorite animal is a sloth but I don't think no I fucking way! <laughs> That's my spirit animal, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, I have really bad ADHD, so it's like I, when I think of a sloth, I just slow down, dude. Like if I like put my mind in the body of a sloth, like psh, I mean, it just helps me slow down and enjoy like the true aspects of life. And like I wanted to get a sloth, I wanted him to be my podcast animal. Like I want to have a hammock in here, oh, geez, and I, I'm just chilling. I legit looked up. To have a pet sloth. Five grand. Five grand. I wasn't even looking at money. It's like what it takes to like have it. Like you have to keep your house humid. You as gotta fuck. bathe them. Yeah. Fucking all the time because they literally are like they grow fungus yeah. on their fur, dude. And they're really good swimmers too. Really? Did yes. not know that. Apparently, since their limbs are so long, when they go and do like a stroke, they fucking fly. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. Like they f- zip right through the water. But like you have to bathe them constantly. You you, can, you can't let them out. Like climb trees and stuff because what happens is once they get up there they'll start growing uh, fungus on their yeah, fur. Yeah, like mites and shit. Yeah, well they do that so they can blend into the trees and so they start growing like algae and all that shit on them. It's mm-hmm. like what the fuck? Like, and then their digestive system is so slow they eat like twice every week or something. Like they don't really need to eat much. But I'm like imagine just a sloth like just chilling. Like I was gonna and when they when you carry them I was gonna skate with them on the boardwalk. They look like, on you like a backpack. Oh, yeah. that's they're so fucking adorable, man. That's what I love. That's like a need for interaction. I think <laughs> where I would want one would be like a need to like have something that like basically depends on you. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. You get a goldfish like that. Goldfish is screwed if you don't pour some food in there. But like they don't give a shit about yeah. you. I don't even know if they're cognizant that you're there. They're just like, oh, food's coming in my bowl now. And like it's like a Thank cat, you. like a cat, like. Obviously, it needs you, but at the same time, it's like, I don't really need you. Oh, I bro, can go out and do my own man. shit, They're bro. little assholes, but, and yet, I love them. I, I, I'm fucked. You're wearing a cat shirt with yep. glasses, yes. Check me out. Check me out. Oh, oh check me out. Oh, yeah. shit. That's dope. But. I, I mean, like dogs. Dependent. Oh, yeah, for sure. They are dependent on us. Mm. Cats, very independent. Very Cats are like, let me just. Oh, you're here. All right, we'll clean up my piss while I hit oh, this yeah, box of mine. Oh yeah, my litter box. And then uh, we got one one of our cats where like he likes us, but he doesn't care to be around us. He will literally avoid you all day, except for he'll come up to you randomly and be, and he just like waits for you and you pet him and he walks away and he's just gone for the rest of the day. Maybe that cat just got like you got. All right, so that's cool because. If you think about it, maybe that cat's personality, you can associate that with some people in society today. Like, okay. a lot of people go to the gym at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. Whether they're too smart to have a conversation with normal people or, you know, because they feel like they're just too developed, like, able, like, having a conversation with a normal person is just like, oh, my God, what is this idiot talking about? Or they're just afraid of society and what people are. So you got to think, with your with that cat, it's coming up to you. And wanting you to pet it. And then it's like, it has a need for social interaction that we all have. We all have like, a, it's like Sims. We all have a little social mm-hmm. skill. He has that, but it's so like low to fill it. Like it, it does not take much. Like if you just look at him, that's all I needed. And then walk away. <laughs> just to know he's not the only person in the world. Because I have this weird theory. Imagine um, like a scenario where you're the only man in the world. Like okay. nobody else is alive. 
that shit be fun for like six months, maybe. Then you're done. Like oh, yeah. you're gonna start talking to yourself. You're gonna start doing what I Am Legend is and start talking to mannequins yeah, and like starting creating because you need that. Yeah. And the only reason I think he held it in so long, being by himself for what was it like a year or something or something like two that. years, is because he had a dog. Yeah. Like, that's the only way he was able to keep sane was he had, like, at least at a slow decrease. Mm-hmm. Well, if we're, like, locked away in a cave or something like that and we just have ourselves to talk to, you start talking to yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, shit, look at, look at Castaway. I mean, he fucking used the volleyball. Wilson, man. Like, it's the whole Wilson. idea. Like, we have, much like we say, I hate people. I wish I could, it was just me in the world. That would be fun for a little bit of time. And then eventually you're going to be like, all right, I need to have social interaction. Mm -hmm. You're going to start talking to yourself and you're going to start answering yourself. Then you're going to start getting in fights with yourself. (laughs) It's the same thing with Fallout. You know, they put the guy in that one vault by himself with all those puppets. And he started creating personalities for the puppets. And then he had one puppet murder all the other puppets. And they were like, you know, you don't remember that? I didn't see. Which one was that? That was Fallout 3, I think. Oh, see, I barely played 3. Fallout 3, man. Like, they had his one puppet. Like, they all had different uh, personalities. One was a king, one was a queen, one was a prince, one was this. And then one dude was like a scientist or like whatever. And then he found one that was a vault dweller. And he was like, well, this one matches my personality. But he had personalities for every single one. Then there was a murder. One of the puppets got murdered. And then they're like, who killed him? And then they all started pointing fingers. All the puppets were like, and this dude created this alternate reality. He was in there for like a year by himself. And like, you just slowly, like after years and years, eventually the one puppet that was killing all the other puppets started like, was like, I'm in control now. And the guy's like, what? It's like idol of hands. You know what I mean? With the hands started doing its own shit. It's like, I'm in control now. They get out of the vault. Dude, he's walking around with this puppet, and he's, like, the, the puppet's killing all the mercenaries and shit. Like, all the normal people. Everyone's like, it's a mad puppet man on the loose. And, like, it's like, because you create such a bond for that social interaction where everyone says, like, oh, there were, like, nobody else in this world. No. If there weren't assholes in this world, you'd still need assholes. Like... There's still that aspect. Yeah, it would be nice for a while if there were no dicks on this earth. Like, um, like you know, there was no one that was mean to other people. But, like, much like we talked about in the beginning where you had that need or that kind of, like, power to, like, look over the bullies and stuff, those bullies also fueled your kind of way of being your own creative self. Like, don't fucking... You saw it. They were assholes, and you chose to rise above that. And, like, that fueled you. So where I say, like, bullying is very, very detrimental to somebody. It's a harmful thing. Mm. It's terrible, but... It hardens you. It hardens you, and some people need that. Like, I definitely... Everything I fucking went through, too, it's like I wouldn't take any of that for granted because, I mean, it it sucked at the time, but I've, I've grown from it. I've matured into my own person faster. You know, I had to become... A lot of people, like, get set, like, you know, someone that... I guess has like a bad family problem or like my grandfather for instance had his dad die when he was in the military when he was 20 he had to come home and raise the rest of his little sisters and brothers and, and take care of his mom he had to become a man he he was forced upon a situation and he had to take grasp and become a man very very early in his life and like you see that happen now and even to younger ages and it's like you don't have a chance to really be yourself but you you, when you get forced into a spot, you mature faster oh, and you develop sure. faster. And it, 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 those people sometimes, like, we, they're seen as being the unlucky ones. And sometimes they look at themselves as being lucky. Like, he said, yeah, it sucked my father died, is what my grandfather said. But he was like, but I raised my family and I learned how to fend for myself mm-hmm. and take care of my family. So when I became older, I already had those skills way ahead of my friends did. And I was like, damn, you think of it in a whole different light, which makes me always talk about changing your, I guess, per, like perspective on life. If you start looking at things like, oh, your car is, is basically almost out of gas. Like, okay, well, my car still has gas in it. Like, change your fucking way of thinking, oh, yeah. man, and life gets fucking better. You know, like, what scenarios would you say that you could apply that to? Like, ooh, man. Uh, uh, let's see. So... I, that sucks that I gotta say this because, you know, Army is really all I've known for a while now. But, I mean, there's a lot of times where we are sucking, like, big time. We're just doing really shitty training. And, you know, 
we're all just waiting to get done. The field problems are, like, lasting two weeks, and it's, like, cold as fuck. But, you know, at least in the end, I know I'm going to come back. I'm going to go into my room that, you know, I have all the amenities. I And luckily, you know, I hate the Army, but, yes, it gives me a place that I can live. I can eat. You know, I have that to look forward to going to, look forward to. I might have to suck for a little bit, but it's all worth it, I guess, in the end. Yeah, you have food and shelter. Now, take that in perspective. I'm not saying compare it to someone else in a less fortunate situation. Oh, no, I mean, that's where, you know, kind of heading for that, but... Haiti. Oh, God. Dude, you ever heard of um, geophagia, the types of people that eat dirt and shit, where there's a thing... Oh, yeah, I've watched the videos where, like, they literally just buy big bags of uh, dirt, and they make little discs things that they... Have you ever heard of a, a Haitian mud pie? Yeah. It's a cookie that's... What was it? It was 80% dirt... And, t- no, 90% dirt, 5% butter, 5% salt. And they use that to fill their stomach. Yeah. It's sad. To stop from starvation. You look at that and you're like, you're complaining that you got, they don't have your fucking sliced chicken on the airplane and you have to have uh, a fucking lobster roll instead. Uh, so White people problems. Bro, people talk, so the DFAC, that's a dining facility, that's where we go to eat for the army. And people talk shit about it all the time, and I'm like, I don't, because I'm like, holy shit, guys, like, they they have a lot of food, and sometimes it's not good, but I'm like, bro, this is like, a homeless man would What's die that, to live What type this. of meals? Oh, okay, so it's weird, so, I hate that they have this, but they have, like, the little fast food side, where it's like, little, little pizza things, uh... Um, chicken tenders, nuggets, burgers, and all that. Then you have, like, the little healthy part that's, like, uh, fish, baked chicken. Um, then there's, like, Taco Tuesdays and shit like that. Uh, there's, like, pasta night sometimes. And then you have, like, potatoes and all that. It's, like, it can be really random. Every now and again, they hook us a little steak and lobster. And, like, okay, yeah, it's not, like, they're gonna be a really nice fucking the best steak or lobster you've ever had, but holy fuck, like I'm saying, like, a homeless man... If he could eat like this every single day, he... Sometimes they go to jail just for the winter, just so they can have warmth and also get food. Like, that's their food. Like, they create a crime or do something where they have to get locked away. So, so you know how many people are in prison that are probably just there because they need food and they don't have anywhere else to go? Yeah. Like, we talk about my grandfather that had a situation that he was thrust upon and he took in the best outlook and became something out of it. There's people that get thrown in that scenario then lose everything and aren't able to function, so they just end up being in prison and they don't know anything besides that. Like, that's what they want to do for the rest of their life is just be in there incarcerated mm-hmm. and get the meals planned for them, get a bed to sleep on, and get these types of things. It might not be the best conditions, but that's the best way they can see their life turning into. And, like, when you're being, I guess, when you're dealing with all these types of meals and stuff... I mean, there's, like I said, there's homeless people that are just going out there to get that type of stuff. And you got to take that in that aspect. I mean, you're talking about other people complaining that there's fast food items at the lunch. It's like, you could be eating Haitian mud cookies, Mm -hmm. man. Like, those those kids would probably freaking kill for a French fry or something, (laughs) dude. And it's like, that's where we talk about, like... It's, we take so much shit for granted, like, oh, yeah. for real, man. Like, how often do you, like, you see all these convenient places and stores that you can go to go get stuff, and you're just like, okay, well, it's not something, you know, it's it's there, but it's like, you're taking it for granted, man. It doesn't mean go oh, spend yeah. $100,000 every single day trying to get it, but it's like, you gotta uh, understand, we have keys to a car. We are able to drive. That's already puts us in a way farther line and like a better place in the world than with some people that don't have it and that's just how we think but there's people out there that sell all their possessions and just live off the land and live off the world and that's life for them and i'm jealous of those people bro i i think about a lot because i've seen a buddy even do it we're like he just gutted out a van fucking starting to sell like little shelving units and just made like a little mobile home and i'm like dude i said that's tyler van sice no, no, it's a guy. He does right? that too. We talked about van life. I was like, how the fuck do you eat? He's like, how do you eat? I'm like, no, I meant like, how do you cook food in your van? And he was like, he put it in a good perspective. He's like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I do what I do. I go and I go places. And like, I, like, I've gone camping before, but even after two, like a week or so of camping, like it's fun, but it's like, I need to fucking shower. I need to like, I don't want to go into the bathhouse and shower there. 
it's like there's too many people. It's like I like people, but I really don't when it comes to like where I got to shit, you know? My buddy who was, who, who I was talking about, I, I asked him, I'm like, dude, like, what are you going to do for that? Like, showers on. I said, I'm just going to get a 24-hour gym pass and just use that. I'm like, hey, I do what you got to do. Exactly. And it's like, that's, that's nuts because, I mean, I, I got upset one time because there was this woman that used to come in on Sundays at the gym. She still does. And she comes in there with her kids and showers and the thing, like, uses the shower. But it reeks. It smells like cat pee. Ooh. And I told my boss about it. I was like, hey, like, seriously. These people are doing this. She goes, I know. And I'm like, why aren't you saying anything? They're just taking advantage. And we've had many people complain that they can't go in the bathroom. I've had to bleach it multiple times. Yeah. And they're like, she doesn't, she can't afford it. And she's got kids. It's like, you got to kind of look at that from that angle. I'm like, you're fucking awesome. Yeah, nice. Like, seriously, like you really care about people. Like she's the one that gives people like free memberships and stuff. Cause oh, she's wow. like, you want to work out like I have a free membership so she's like you want to work out and you know I understand that and you're committed to it so go ahead for it and she she gave me the key to the gym dude I open up all doors whenever I want but I'm like I don't ever take that for granted because her giving that to me was like someone putting a fucking I don't even know like God giving me the ability to fly when I was a kid wishing for that shit like damn that's awesome it's it's crazy because like you see people like there are these amazing extraordinary people out in this world that like really set the tone and create a better life for not only themselves but create a better life for people around them mm -hmm. and that's fucking beautiful dude and it gets me down to the question I usually ask everyone on here what's your passion man what, what do you see pursuing in your life that you want to keep on doing and make the world a better place? So just... it's, it's actually that funny that you say that, like, in the way you phrase that. Like, my biggest thing in life is I want to help others. And, like, that's kind of how the Army kind of happened in a way. So one of my biggest epiphanies was... That. The bomb going off an IED. <laughs> right? But no, one of my biggest epiphanies was I was at the, uh, the OC Air Show uh, years and years ago, a couple, couple years before the Army. and Another IED going off. That's my mother. <laughs> she, wait, I called her earlier. It's all good. But um, I was at the OC Air Show and just watching everyone come together and being at the ability to just come on this beach and watch jets. Of all things, just having a blast. And I thought, this is it. This is the freedom that we have to be able to just come and do this. And at that point, I was like, that's why I want to join the Army. Like, I want to protect that. I want to be able to be like, go out there, keep America safe so we can have that stability. And it goes back to us saying, if I kill a guy that, you know, was going to blow up 20 people, I save all those people's lives and I'll do what it takes to do that and I'm actually gonna change my job after the infantry you know after I get done with this deployment uh, I want to do radiology really that's and in the army and get started with that why radiology uh goes back to uh, helping, helping others I, cancer? If, if I can go in every day and be like oh, it's, it's actually it's not just cancer it's like x-rays bone scans all that if I can go in every day and like be one of the people that helps identify like what's wrong with someone and then you know get that whole process started them getting better i'm happy There's same with uh operating room specialists and mental health specialists if i can just be there every day in a hospital helping someone i'm happy there's a um connection between that and you joining the military you know that right go ahead uh so you want to know my theory behind yeah. it military you're going into a situation to prevent further damage to people or any incoming threats. Now you're talking about radiology, you're predicting certain scenarios or diseases and being a way to figure out how to fix them before they occur. So you're basically doing the same thing just in a more intermediate or intimate thing scenario. Mm -hmm. So instead of affecting a whole population like the military would, you're affecting certain people's lives, which makes a more dramatic change and gives you more of an impact of what that need or passion that you have to fill of helping others. It's more like you're able to, you still kind of feel the same, I guess, saying when you do something for war benefits and you're like, you're helping, oh, I just helped the country. You know, you feel like you helped, but you didn't really 
affect anybody's life. Yeah. You would do radiology or doing something like that where you give someone good news and you're able to fix someone and give them treatment before this disease occurs that changes their whole life and gives them another however long to live. And that impacts them more and creates more of a bond and more of a fulfillment in your goal of what you need to do when you want to help others. And that creates something. So doing that would help. I mean, they're both linked, but that helps pursue what you want to do. And that's awesome, dude, because my main thing, like my passion was, I didn't know what it was and I still kind of don't know what it was. I hope it's podcasting, man, because oh, yeah. I love talking to people, dude. It's great conversations to see where it comes from. Me and my cousin actually had an idea to buy a spot on the boardwalk during the summer we found a place for rent like on 27th street right on the boardwalk where we're going to turn into like a radio studio and we just have Ooh, people come off the boardwalk like hey want a podcast for like an hour or however long you want to talk and then like they can sit in the waiting room and you know they have tv so you can see what's going on inside because eventually i want to have we have the giant microphone set up we just got this table in here so we got to still hook those up so i'm still using my little mobile recorder mm -hmm. but it's like i i don't want to like, a lot of people are like, why don't you share it or do anything like that? I'm like, I, I, I share it on Facebook, but I don't go and invite and spend money on the page to get it developed. I'm really like, the only thing I'm thinking about doing now is making business cards. And that's just, here's the podcast. Let me know if you want to be on it. That's the whole thing. Okay. And it's just because we all have a story. And it's like the same answer. Everyone asks, why me? Why me? It's like, we all have a story, dude. Like, you got to tell me it. I want to know it. I'm sorry if you don't think you're interesting, but I hate to tell you, you are. And it's, it's crazy because once I found this all out, like, it, it just, it puts everything and people into a better perspective. But if I see a person that's yelling at someone in the store, I go, do you really need to act like that? And they're like, give me like this weird answer. I'm like, all right, well, what's going on? Like, you're obviously, you got, you know, something that happened that became, made you this angry. You're not really this angry at the person, you're angry at something else. I'm like, if you want to talk about it, let me know. And that's where I wanted to chase down my passion for being a therapist. And I found out my actual, like, I guess passion is turning into more of a freer way of doing it mm -hmm. by podcasting. It's like a form of therapy. Like, you know, we're just having good conversation. And it's, I, I think of therapy as anything that benefits both the person and the person oh, yeah. who's talking to the other person it's like as long as we both leave here like with a happy like mood and like a good like standing of like how it was even if it's sometimes like an argument or a bad conversation i don't see it as an argument like my one podcast i did called uh it was like a uh, road trip or whatever into the void or something like that van trip into the void with tyler van sice wade wilkins jose robles and my cousin Corey. I had got my cousin in here 30 minutes during the podcast because he was talking about like par like different realities and how we're all like the same and started to get into this, some spiritual stuff. I'm like, hang the fuck on. My cousin does a lot of fill in the blanks with me on possible alternate universes and all these other types of things like the B theory of time where the, the past and the present are the only thing that are occurring right now and the future is undetermined. So like the idea that Right now, as we're talking, mm -hmm. the war of 1945 is going on right now. Okay. So it's in a whole other universe in reality. And it actually came to my theory of how when you're sleeping and your rapid eye movement, mm -hmm. it's your brain searching for a possible reality to hop into, which is your dreams. Ooh. Yes, that's a good, like, mind screw. But um, it, I brought him in, and we're all talking, and it's just cool to hear everyone's aspect on religion, everyone's aspect. Like, Tyler didn't understand, you know... It wasn't an argument, and it wasn't... We were all trying to understand each other's ways of thinking. And I ended up where I was against him in the podcast turning to his side. Like, I see what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. Like, you put it in a better perspective. And it's it's hard because, like, you go and... what The, the one thing, like, was really hard to do was you had five people on here. You're trying to get everyone talking, not over each other, but one person talking at once. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to throw in their opinion, especially when something pops up. And... It's a big problem with, you can take that same aspect into world scenarios with government trying to communicate and get stuff done. Everyone's screaming in a room trying to get shit solved. It's like, no, if everyone just takes the time to listen and get their own voice in there, we would have a hell of a lot better understanding of what everyone else is thinking. China might agree with Argentina. <laughs> Argentina might agree with, you know, whatever, Japan. It's like, it's we're able to get these types of 
things across if we just sit down and work something out, but we're so willing to fire off something or be able to show how flashy we are. I mean, 19, what was it, 75 was, uh, I guess, America. It was Project 4.1. America tried to launch a nuclear device at the moon. It might have been 1959. You didn't hear about that? No. We were just trying to show how powerful our nuclear weapons were, so we had a planned attack to launch a nuke on the moon, and then some guy was like, wait a minute. We haven't fully understand the research of the moon yeah. yet. If we do that, that's going to fuck up all of our data. And then they ended up creating a plan later, which I have an article on, called uh, uh, Colonization of the Moon. And Russia, America, all has strategic uh, plans to make development of a military base onto the moon. Space Force. That's what I'm saying, dude. SpaceX, man. That, if that Tesla can go up there, we can go up there. <laughs> right. Dude, that's what they had a theory that Elon Musk shot somebody in that Tesla. Because there's, there's, <laughs> there's a person in there. Put him in the trunk. But like, yeah, but it's like one of the people he doesn't like. Just like launches him in there. I mean, leave him no food. Be like, oh, now you're fucked in space. <laughs> That's a good way to get rid of a body, though. Yeah, and Just don't get launch her into space. <laughs> no one's checking the Tesla yeah. and the stars. Hey, that's a good rap album, too. Oh, Tesla, Tesla and the stars. And stars? Hell yeah, I can dig it. Could you create lyrics for it? Ooh. Well, so, what would our number one album be? Besides, te- the band's called Tesla, or the album's called Tesla and the Stars. What would the song title, our hit song, be? Ooh. See, that's where you put me on the spot. Ooh. Running on autopilot. Running on autopilot. Because Teslas are Ooh. autopilot. I, I think bet. of dumb stuff really good. Ooh. Hack See, My ha- Systems. Hack My Systems. That would be our love song that we'd have to have for the <laughs> ladies out song. there. Like Katy Perry's Roar. One. You gotta have one. Exactly. <laughs> Katy Perry's Roar. I mean, what is that? That, doesn't, that fires up everyone. That and Firework. You hear Firework? <laughs> Yo. It's all over. Bro, I'll admit that. I, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Dem, Demi Lovato, dude, I, I listen to it all. I don't even care. Like, I, my my music is so diverse. I can go from, like, you know, hardcore rap, which more of, like, older, because today's, like, mumble rap, I can't really stand. And I can switch it over to, like, shit like that, like, pop. I love pop. I love pop punk, like, old punk, rock, all that. Like, ugh, my music on my phone is just nuts, like, from one thing to another. I don't see music, any of it as bad. There's definitely certain types I like over others, mm-hmm. but I see it as a creative thing. As someone creating their form of music and like, you know, Led Zeppelin or, did Led Zeppelin create Stairway to Heaven? Who created Stairway to Heaven? Yes, I believe so. Because there's a theory that they stole, they actually got sued. Somebody stole Stairway to Heaven with one of their songs. Yes, that's yes. okay. Really? It was Zeppelin that created Stairway to Heaven? Yes. Well, there was a band that um, Zeppelin, they think, was Stairway to... No, someone stole something with like the beat that sounds like Stairway to Heaven. I gotta look up what that is real quick. I, but. I, I Man, music and shit like that. So, like, okay, like, Juice World, Lucid Dreams. I believe that's the name of the song. What song is it? Lucid Dreams. Is that the one that stole Stairway to Heaven? No, no, no. I'm, like, bringing this up, like, kind of like with Stairway to Heaven. Okay. Um... Uh, the guy who made it, Juice World, he makes like almost no money off of it because uh, a little bit of the music came from Sting, and Sting like just took all of it. And I mean that's like that's how the uh, music industry is, man. Like constantly, people are suing people. While Eminem, oh what was his? It was on his second to last album, I believe, or actually third at this point, and someone sued him for uh, like. Just the rhythm of the words are like so close to theirs. It's like, damn. Well, I actually heard this. It's um, Led Zeppelin's lead singer Robert Plant and guitarist Jimmy Page must face a U.S. jury trial over whether they stole opening chords for their 1971 classic Stairway to Heaven. In a decision on Friday, U.S. District Court Judge Gary Klausner in Los Angeles said the song and the 1967 instrumental Taurus by the band Spirit were similar enough to let a jury decide whether Plant and Page were liable for copyright infringement. So they actually opened up for that band that created that song Taurus, which was the original that sounds like Stairway to Heaven. Mm. And they think that's where they got it. And he was like, it must have been my crappy memory. That's what uh, Robert Plant said 
when he answered to why did you steal the lyrics and put that in the stairway to heaven and he was like oh i must have just remembered it in the back of my head or something you know and that's honestly the thing like you sometimes you think you know something's yours but like yeah she just kind of creeps out and you don't know where it came from you think it's yours but fuck it i mean colonel sanders man he freaking uh so, sold his recipe or no bought the recipe for the spicy or the chicken the kfc secret recipe mm-hmm. he bought it from some dude for like two or like two thousand dollars or something and then ended up getting like way more money that guy was like can i get more money the guy goes nope you sold us your recipe bro oh, man. like screwing people over like we've been screwing people over since day one to get ahead dude that's where i asked like i love how you're wor- working on helping people and being able to benefit us as a society, building us up rather than taking us down because so many people are willing to step on someone else's throat or kick someone else down the ladder to get their life better. You know, I see it all the time. I deal with that all the time. I deal with people doing that to me constantly. But I'm like, I'm not going to try and get to my goal faster by hurting somebody else. I'm going to take the whatever steps I need to go to get to my goal without feeling like a dick in the end because if I have it and I ended up accomplishing it, then I'm going to look back like, damn, I did that to that person. I did that to that person. Then you end up being 80 years old where you're like, I hate my life because I was a dick. You know? I I mean, I would love it if someone just came up to me like, hey, here's a million dollars. That'd be fucking nice. But at the same time, I don't mind working to get there. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, it would be hell of a lot easier for me. But at the same time, like, hey, man, I, I'd rather get to my podcast turning into this giant station or something where, you know, I'm able to control it. And my dad works radio. I could easily get, oh, yeah. he was telling me about being on my own segment and on the radio and get podcasts through there where I'd always have one scheduled. And I'm like, but I like being able to set it up myself. I don't want someone setting it up for oh, me because yeah. once I start getting it commercialized and all that stuff, like I've had YouTube talk about doing ads for my videos. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm okay right now. Like, I, and I've had people say, hey, can I be your tech guy or something where I can help look up facts? I'm like, that's cool and all, but, like, I'm okay, but to be honest with you, just because... you you for this, man? Like, I, I like it when you see my message pop up on Facebook or something, and you're like, what's up, man? And I'm like, hey, do you have time for, like, an hour? And then, like, sometimes they answer back, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just ignore my message. I don't mind. I'm like, because if... If you don't want to do it now, maybe you'll want to do it later down the road. And if you never change your mind on it, that's fine. But at the same time, like, I'm out trying to, you know, I will bug the shit out of somebody about being on the podcast. Especially when you tell me, yeah, we'll set up a day and then you keep going, like, bailing out. I'm like, shoot me a day, shoot me a day, shoot me a day. Because I'm like, I need to, I, I try and schedule it out because you don't know how many times someone bails out, like, last minute. Like, oh, I just don't know about a podcast. I'm like, dude. It's easy as shit. It's an hour. You don't want me to post it. I'm not going to post like it. Like you said, it's just talking. That's yeah. all it is. I mean, was it really that strenuous trying to get you to freaking talk to me for what? Like, what was it? Like, been an hour? I'm like, seriously. It's like, it's so simple and so easily. And we, we get so connected. You, I learn stuff about you. You learn stuff about mm-hmm. me and shit that we're going to fucking remember. And then you get to go do the rest of your day. You get to go eat Taco Bell and take a shit if you want. <laughs> nice. Nicely put. That's cool, though, man, that you have a passion for radiology, because that's a difficult thing, man. Especially when you think of microwaves. You ever heard of the microwave auditory effect? Mm -mm. That microwaves get off off a certain pitch that, like, it it, it messes up your memories a little bit. Really? The government actually had, like, a giant research thing that was using, like, microwave messaging. They would use microwaves, and, like, it was this type of gun that shot of frequency like a microwave gives off with that radiation and that type of frequency a microwave's on that can cause someone to get their memory erased. We had an actual weapon for it and everything. I'm like, what the shit? Jeez, that sounds like some men in black shit. <laughs> but, it, like, with radiology, you just, like, focus on, like, CAT scans and stuff? Or? So, I mean, I can't tell you entirely because I, mean, I haven't started it yet, but uh, I, I was told, like, from someone who was actually taking my women's scan at the time, that, like, they do all the processing of it, like, giving the images and all that, but they're legally not allowed to tell you what the, um, what the outcome is, because that's, like, to the officers. So, like, I'm enlisted, so I can do all the work for it, but, like, the officer has to look at it, and then, like, he has to give his say, and then it gets down to there, but, um, yeah, it's bone scans, x-rays... Um, MRI, MRIs, and 
just stuff like that. It's Remember, I got my foot. I think I thought I like messed it up or something, and they had to scan it. And I was like, "Can I get a scan of my scans?" And they're like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "Can I get a copy of my bone <laughs> scans?" And they're like, "Why?" And I'm like, "Well, can you tell me if anything's messed up?" And they're like, "No, I can't do that. It has to be to the doctor to understand. We just kind of take the scans." I'm like, "Okay, well, can I get a copy of them?" Like, it's going to be an extra 45 minutes. I'm like, I'll wait. Sat there in the lobby. I have the CD over there. And it's like my foot. And I'm like, yeah, that's dope. I want to get it put up in the podcast. Like, print it out and everything. Like, look at You get to see my bones and shit. Nice. Like, that's awesome. Like, I saw Timmy's x-rays he had after his car accident. And, you know, he was on the podcast. And he was talking about, like, the feelings of all that. And, like... You understand, like, you see stuff like that, you, you think you're just invincible, and then something like that puts into a perspective, dude. Like, you realize we're just bags of, like, jello, like, <laughs> basically blood, like, with these, like, little bones that can break easily, but we take it so for granted and don't even realize it, you know? And it's it's fascinating, of which, are you just fascinated by not just helping people, but also, like, the human body? Uh... I mean, I am, definitely. I mean, oh, God, the world in general, human body, anatomy, just everything it takes to make us work alone, uh, I'd say it's it's pretty dope. But when it comes down to the job itself, it really is just helping people. You should figure out why Armenian people wear, like, they have so much chest hair, but they have hair on their shoulders, too, and, like, where it's like a sweater. So I'm really bad with geography, so where are, where where is Ar- Armenia? Middle East. Middle East, okay. I'm really bad with geography, too. I thought freaking a place in Canada was in Japan, so... Really? Yeah, it was on like a what, podcast, too. I looked like a, yeah, actually, I was it looked like a complete dumbass. <laughs> but I was like, I don't own a globe, Fuck but I was going to buy it for the podcast room so I could be able to point to all my bullshit. But no, it's, it's just like, when you start thinking, like, I don't know how those, like... And you, you witness somebody at the gym with hair on their shoulders or mm-hmm. hair on their back, and you're like, the, you can make a sweater place. out of that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, that just fascinates me. Like, how did the hell do you do that? And how do you have the balls to wear a tank top above all things? I say, fuck it, man. Send it. Fuck it. I'm wearing a sweater and a tank top. <laughs> Dude, see, well, at least you got the aspect of what this podcast is, man. Like, where it's, it's just a conversation, dude. Like, oh, yeah. Dude, we're just joking this. around, dude. It's it's shooting the shit, man. I'm really fascinated by a lot of your tattoos, man. Seriously. <laughs> oh, dude, my tattoos are nuts. Like, because I, I go from, like, mostly everything that's, like, upper torso and shit. What's the one you have on your upper part of your short? Okay, so. I'm not staring at your dick no, or anything. You're good, you're good. Borderlands and a Dragon Ball. Yep. Favorite game series. You didn't series. even need to explain those. Favorite game series and probably one of like for me my most influential like animes, which I haven't even watched super. I've watched all the movies for them, but I own every on like uh the D V D box sets, I own every episode of Dragon Ball, G T, Super or sorry, not Super, uh Ball Z G T, all the movies in between. I have all those super movies except for Broly. I, I have the Broly seen, I have the super I have that one. Oh. I mean, honestly, if I can find it, I'll give it to you. Oh, boy, you don't have to give me it. No, I'm serious. If I find it, I don't know where the hell it is. But <laughs> I have like so many DVDs. If I seriously find it, I'll give it to you because I don't watch it, any of it anymore. And oh. I just like I can just look it up online if I need to. My brother's a giant Dragon Ball Z fan, and right now he's like binge watching uh, One Piece and all that shit. Oh my god, One Piece is like. 800 episodes right now. Like, I got the episode like 400 He just something. finished all of Naruto. All yeah. the new shit and all old shit. Jesus. So, nice. Yeah. Shippuden is like 500 flat. Uh, the original is like 2 something. Brodo's, I don't even know. I always that, joke but. with him because I'm like, dude, you're 24 and you have a kid and you're watching nothing but... And he's playing old school RuneScape. I'm like, get Jesus, off of that shit. Dude, I, don't, I don't get RuneScape. I just it's logged like so in the other day on freaking my computer while I was doing... Because I realized I can do fill-in-the-blank articles, like, be able to work on them, and look up the facts while I have RuneScape in the background. So I was like, I'm just going to get my skills to 99. Oh, I only have three skills that are 99. I'm working on fishing. It takes a fucking year and a half. And I've been playing on and off for, like, three years now. So my skills at ninety five or something, and it's like it feels like it's been forever, and it's never gonna get to ninety nine. Oh, bro, but, I, I need to go check on my Neopets. I think they're dying. Mine. <laughs> all right. Mine are probably like they've moved on. <laughs> you go to log in these bones. 
It's like, it's like a goldfish. Like 15 years since I been lost dead. that freaking account thing. That was the shit back in the day, man. I used to go to McDonald's and get those Neopet toys, and I used to make my mom turn around. I put her through hell, you know, on the way to Florida every time we stopped. I got the same one. You have to go back. And then, like, I'd always make her go back in. She's like, I don't know how many times I've had this string back in there. I'm like, damn right, man. So if you can make a kid happy doing that shit, like, might as well, man. What's that extra minute? <laughs> right, yeah. It's cool, though, dude, because, like, with Dragon Ball Z, which is the, another thing I wanted to talk about with you when it comes to the beginning of when we talk about how you don't care what other people think. You do one of the main things that a lot of other people figured it out, just like you. Comic-Con. Mm-hmm. Dressing up in those anime outfits. You dressed up as the dude from Naruto. Yeah, and it's nah. funny, right before you posted those pictures, I was playing Shippuden, too, and I just beat freaking that one dude Hidatu that you Kakuzu? dressed up that you just dressed up as and killed him hell yeah and I was like damn that's ironic that Drew's dressed up as I'm at Comic Con right now dude that is awesome man it's gotta be so comfortable literally being able to like yes you are not caring what other people think about you if you go and do that into society today just mm-hmm. walk around dressed up as a guy from an anime series dressed up as Goku walking through the store or actually Goku's probably a lot better to dress up as now a lot of people seem to be into Dragon Ball Z yeah. Like, superheroes are coming into society. Oh, yeah. Like, t-shirts and all that shit. But, um, you dressed up as someone with Naruto, a lot of makeup and, like, fake hair and stuff. Like <laughs> Actually, it wasn't, it wasn't even fake hair. I, I, I spray-dyed my hair for that. Just slicked it fully back and just sprayed it silver. Well, I mean, like, people that wear, like, pink wigs and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. And, you like, know imagine what? trying to walk into Walmart like that. Someone's gonna look at you weird. But if you go to Comic-Con, you fucking blend in, dude. And mm-hmm. you get compliments. And, oh, see, and, and that's, they're sincere. That's one of my favorite things, too, is, like... When you go to those cons and you're like that, like, everyone there is all in the same mindset. And I love it. Everyone's there, just like me. No one cares. Because we all love what we're there for. And it's just great. And, like, people come up to me, like, when I get asked for a picture, like, it makes me really happy. Because it means, like, I did a really good job and someone's like, whoa, I want to get a picture with him. And it makes me feel good that all my effort, like, meant something. And then, vice versa, like, me going up, like, that's when I first went to cons... I was really, like, kind of, like, closed in about it. Like, I didn't, I was like, this is really weird to me. And, like, I would, like, I'd be like, excuse me, can, can I get a picture with you? And then, like, it's just evolved. Where, like, I'm like, yo, I love your costume. Like, can I get a picture with you? And like, yeah. I'm like, oh, it's, it's just this great feeling I love. Besides dressing up as, like, somebody who's just, like, Leonidas or something with their shirt off just to show off my six-pack, I would just be the guy that would just be dressed normal. But I'd be enjoying all of it just the oh, same. Yeah. Just because I'm, I'm not a big guy on dressing up and going up like that type of stuff, mostly because trying to get all that shit off at the end of the day is like, fuck. Like, this is all fun when it was going towards something. Mm-hmm. Now I gotta just take it off, and it's like, this is just a process. Yeah, like, my shout-out for that sucks. Yeah. And it's like, I just do it to enjoy it. It's, it's fun to watch people and, like, just be able to be themselves, man. Like, w- when you see that, it's like, good job, dude. Like, you really, like, and it's, you're in an environment, especially with Comic-Con. Like, we have those in Ocean City. You see all these people dress up and do cosplay and type mm-hmm. of stuff. That's awesome, man. And I used to be like, look at these fucking weird people. Like, in my own head. I wouldn't say it out loud because I thought that would be mean. But <laughs> seeing that now, like... Damn, they got to figure it out, man. Like, seriously, why do we give that much of a shit? Why are there people that protest Comic-Con? Bro, that happened. The Westboro Baptist Church was Yeah, dude, that's ridiculous, the man. And the older son said, like, what the fuck? It had something that said something ridiculous. It didn't make any sense about Comic-Con. God hates fags and stuff like that. I'm like, are you insinuating that everyone that goes to Comic-Con is a, a gay person? Like... They were so against it, dude. They were, like, playing dress-up. You're dressing up as the devil and all this stuff. I'm like, I actually did a podcast about it. My very first film, Blank. I was like, why did they do say all this shit? I swear, man, they just don't get it. Like, if they literally sat down with us, like, people go to cons, like, we're really nice people. Like, we're carefree. And, like, yeah, why are you bothering others? And, like, are they coming to your church and <laughs> yeah, that, protesting riding that? there and protesting there? No. It's like, there always seems like where there's a bunch of people that are so happy and like, someone's having fun. There's always someone that's like, I need to take that away from them. And it's like, seriously, like, the one harmless thing you could think of is Comic Con. Like, those people are like, it's a place where nerds can feel 
at home yeah, and it's comfortable and safe. Man. Literally, it's like if the one place you feel comfortable is in your room by yourself, no one in there. You're able to do whatever the hell you want, and no one gives you're able to dance like no one's watching. And then when you're at Comic Con, you're dressed up like this. You're literally feel the exact same as if you are in your room. You oh, are yeah. in your general base. Like these are my people. Like we all are on the same basis here. And every reference, game wise or video wise, like they all understand that shit. And that's mm-hmm. that's awesome, dude. And like I, it's, I do want to go to one and just to experience it because if someone that's gonna judge it, like the Baptist church people, if they just experience it, they'd be like, "Holy crap! This is not any different than what we do in our church. Yeah. We're all the same people conforming to one thing and having the same idea of something, except with you guys. You guys worship a lot more." Other things that are not one giant deity in particular. Man, yeah, if you God, you'll love it, man. It's insane, especially if you can get really good guests guests there. Because I am, I've been in the like uh, like the rooms where they go and they talk to you and all that. I forget the word, but for Miley Flanagan, the voice actress of Naruto, uh, the voice actress of Bulma, uh, Mike. Not Michael Keaton. Uh, the guy who voices Batman in the animated series. Uh, like, Mark Hamill's the Joker, and he's, like, the voice of Batman. I forget his name. He was insane. Like, he, like, told us his whole life story and everything. He was awesome. Tom Kenny, voice actor of SpongeBob and, like, every other thing you can think of that's him. Like, it's great to see these people because they, like, Tom Kenny, he literally talks and acts like he's Spongebob. Like, his, like, his personality is so in line with that. Yeah, it's weird how he does his laugh, too. He hits his throat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then Miley Fang, she did, she was like, what's my favorite line? Believe it! What do you think my least favorite line is? Believe it! I'm like, Jesus. Uh, that's, that's, that's funny, dude. It's crazy, because, like, I, what, if you saw me going there and I had to dress up as somebody, who would you think I'd dress up as? Ooh. Or be a good fit for. Who is it? Johnny Cage. Really? Johnny Cage? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Like you said, I think straight up you you would fit it with like the amount you work out, dude. Straight up. Johnny Cage. Yeah. Dick. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. He is kind of a jerk. I mean, at least in the beginning of Mortal Kombat series, he's all flashy and stuff. Mm -hmm. I do like Johnny Cage's character, Look, too, though. Like, honestly, I think you can pull it off, man. Dude, I've been hit on so many times in my podcast by other dudes. It's really (laughs) good. Like you got the hey, you, no homo, right? They're like, they're like you got the TV face. I'm like, what's that mean? Like, look to the side. I'm like, look to the side. I'm like, yeah, you sexy bastard. I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? It's funny though, cause like, I I think the one thing I would do if I was gonna do a, a game series would either be something from Mortal Kombat. Like, I would love to dress up as like Scorpion or Sub Zero, but that's like the common mm, one to do. But I just like the outfit. Like, you know what I mean? But then also, you know, the one thing I got from a thrift store for two bucks. My yeah. Assassin's Creed what? gauntlet, bro. Two bucks? Two dollars, man. What the fuck? This shit fuck? works, too, but I think I Yo. broke it the other day. Oh, shit. That shit's sharp. Try to push Is that, it? Try and push that back in. Ooh. Damn. Damn. Two bucks. Holy shit. Right? It's the thing from Origins. Freaking Egyptian, freaking two bucks at a thrift store. That's why I'm like, yo, you see all this stuff? No one throws it. No one understands the whole freaking thing of what how awesome stuff is man and it looks dope dude it's like literally i would walk around the store with that i, I mean wouldn't get fear of arrested shit you could, you could start your costly right here man you've already got a pretty expensive piece dirt cheap you can just build the rest from here yeah next is to buy that if you want to just look like the guy from fallout you go to gamestop <laughs> straight up you get that fallout weapon it's it's cool because like I think we all have an inner nerd inside of us, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, we all don't... I didn't even notice there's a switch for this hidden blade at the bottom. It says on and off. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So now it locks. Well, safety. Oh, my goodness. They're always <laughs> thinking of safety. <laughs> but it's like, you know, when you think of stuff like... Like, just everyone has an inner nerd. We all have this ability or this wantingness to just be like, let our freak out. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? That's not harmful to anybody but it's willing to be like the coolest thing in the world dude and And dude as soon as you let it go and you just like go open about it yeah i'm telling you life is so much better instead of being like a little closet nerd like just be open about it and then you'll find people that like like shit that you like too and it's like you can just start nerding out yeah it's like when are you gonna 
really, why do you care so much what others think of you when really they're not going to affect the ending, what happens in your life in the ending? Mm -hmm. Like, you're the only one that has the keys to your own car to drive and be able to control whatever you want to do, dude. So whatever passion you have, whatever thing you want to really go for to pursue something, you should just go and do it and not worry what other people think of you and don't let other people stop you from achieving it because in the end, the only thing that those people that do that to you they're only in your life for a very 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 brief millisecond of time mm -hmm. of your existence and you got so much that you're impacting on your own you can't just let someone stop you and i drew i really appreciate you coming down and being on the podcast man because it, it really means a lot that you're able to first of all take the time at least find the time to sit down and just chill and be able to shoot the shit it was good seeing you dude and oh, yeah. I, I definitely want to have you on again another time and i really like what you're doing with your hair it's very <laughs> suave and i just got it though i just told i look like i'm in the mafia from on snapchat when i was posting i was like i knew I'll take it, the man. Italian I'll mafia. Take it. i knew it I'm all right man well it was good having you on and uh everybody uh stay tuned for the next episode of out of the blank podcast